What's up, everybody, and welcome to ITG Daily, the show that brings you the hottest in gaming news each and every day. I'm Drew Bosley. That's Brad Davison. That's right. We got a special guest today. Brad, what are we talking about on today's show? Well, Xbox has a major announcement taking place at the Game Awards. Uh, Bethesda employees are still working on Starfield, and Insomniac's Wolverine is apparently not coming out until 2025. That's right, but people can catch us everywhere around the globe across Amazon Prime, Jinx Esports TV, Roku. We're also on the audio side with Fired Up Network, our YouTube channel, Inside the Game Official, and of course, InsideTheGame.ca. There's always lots to talk about, Brad, so let's get going. It's the Game Awards, Xbox, what are they up to? Ladies and gentlemen, before we even get going, it is Brad joining us from Northern Nerdcast. Brad, it's been a while, buddy. What have you been up to? Yeah. <laughs> uh, not a, well, I shouldn't say not a lot. There's there's a lot of stuff that you're privy to that uh, can't really seems. talk about. But, I mean, I can say that we're bringing uh, Nostalgicon to Toronto next October. Nice. Um, there are, we're headlining the show is David Bateson, a.k.a. Agent 47. John St. John, better known as Duke Nukem. Uh, Pat Mastriani and Stacey Mystician from Degrassi, and you know what? Whatever. Uh, we are <laughs> currently in talks to also bring Kenny versus Spenny to uh, to the show. So for those of you who don't know what Kenny versus Spenny is, it's kind of like a live action prank show, South Park. Sure, um, sure. Which which I think they're pretty nostalgic as well. So uh, yeah, we're just gearing up for that, and we've got our show coming up in April as well. And David Bateson is headlining that show in Sudbury. Uh, so he's double dipping. He's coming to Canada twice, and he's only coming to our shows for next year. For next year. So Dude, pretty, that's pretty exciting wild. stuff. That's very exciting. I, I had yeah. the, the fortune of talking with David already about uh, his role at Agent Forty Seven in Hitman, one of my favorite franchises around. So it's, he's what a cool guy. So it's nice to see him come to Canada. Um, for those who don't know, we will be there in Toronto yep. for the Nostalgia Con, and we'll be talking to David and maybe some others that are yet to be announced <laughs> absolutely but brad before we get that dude what have you been playing lately there's a lot of games out this year man you got a top what's your favorite right now um currently i'm replaying yakuza like a dragon uh because i'm just i'm waiting for infinite wealth like I, I just i just finished yeah i know that's not your jam but no it's not uh, i i just finished uh like a dragon gaiden which is kind of a spin-off sure. send off to kiryu's story from the original yakuza and it leads into infinite wealth. Um, I'm also playing well, quite a few. Like I've got four games going on the Switch. I'm still uh, eyeing Mario RPG because <laughs> I, mean, I grew up playing that. Yeah. Um, but just pretty much everything. Like, well, not Starfield. But <laughs> did you play Starfield? Uh, I gave it about ten hours and yeah. Yeah. did not grab me at all. Not knocking it, but it's sure. just. I don't know. I just find it. Uh, I'll say it. It's uh, Skyrim in space. Yeah. No. That's that's <laughs> fair, right? It, the game. I didn't think that game would be for everybody. Um, I. It's funny because as of recently, I tried getting back into the game. I dove in. I was there for maybe twenty minutes, and then somebody hit me up to play something. I was like, "Yep," <laughs> and I bounced out. Right. It's just. Yeah. But now I'm probably I don't know ninety hours in, so I have <laughs> definitely put my time in, but never wrapped up the story. So it's something I still want to do this year. I think maybe more towards the holidays, but holidays yeah. are always busy. But Scott, or Scott, I'm so used to Scott, Brad. It's nice to have you there. <laughs> oh, thanks for having me. Again. <laughs> Brad, let's get into it because we got a lot to talk about today. Xbox set to a major announcement at the Game Awards, says an insider, Sam Colley over at Game Ramp. Xbox reportedly has a major announcement planned for the Game Awards, and it's causing a stir among fans. Arguably the most prestigious event. In the games industry, the Game Awards is an opportunity to celebrate some of the biggest releases of the current year and award one incredible game for a well-deserved title of Game of the Year. Brad, you've seen the nominees for Game of the Year. Who do you think takes it this year? Uh, I I, I have to go with Baldur's Gate 3. I just, Bad. like, okay, um, Alan Wake 2 just came out. It's been, it's I think it's leading with nominations, but I just, I think uh, that it's going to be Baldur's Gate. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with that one. The nominees for this year's event have been selected and shared online and share and have actually caused a bit of a fuss among the community. Bethesda's newest IP, Starfield, has been snubbed, though fans aren't exactly surprised. Not really. Additionally, Hogwarts Legacy has failed to be nominated for a single category, causing outrage among 
players. Brad, that one shocked me. Man, like, yeah. really? Hogwarts, <laughs> I thought, was an incredible masterpiece this year and should be awarded for something, don't you think? I, 100%. Like, I I loved every minute I played with it. Now, I'm, oh, I'm assuming mm -hmm. that it has to do some kind of backlash with J.K. Rowling. Maybe they just... Yeah kind of sweep it under the rug but it's uh it's a pretty big rug and people have noticed that it, it's not there at all which is kind of shocking it is kind of shocking it, i get the backlash from jk and it's understandable and the first thing that came to my mind was that's got to be the only reason why it's not there because on every other feat dude it's there for technical wows like the yeah. world itself the storytelling i thought the masterpiece of hogwarts itself just finding incredible secrets out of nowhere things behind walls that you wouldn't expect to be there right yeah. just things popped up i felt like a hogwarts student playing that game loved every minute of it and to have it not be at the game awards it was devastating however the game awards isn't just about giving shiny trophies to people one in, uh, on a big stage though it's also prime time for major game announcements and reveals with the soon to be viewers hoping for the long-awaited gta 6 trailer to be part of the show brad before we even continue dude there's so much to talk about today already <laughs> do <laughs> we see gta 6 trailer revealed at the game awards uh i, I it's see i think it's gonna either open or close the show uh ah. it's not one of those titles that you can just throw in the middle because yep. you'll have people that may just not tune into something you got to either start with a bang or finish with a bang i think here's the thing Jeff Keighley, and I mentioned this before in the show, Jeff Keighley needs, I don't think he even needs it, really. He wants GTA 6, where Rockstar yeah. doesn't need anybody. <laughs> like, they can announce, they can reveal it the day before, right? And that would honestly take a lot of the spotlight away from Jeff Keighley and the Game Awards yeah. if Rockstar wanted to do that. While it's not confirmed if Rockstar Games has anything planned for the event, it is confirmed Microsoft will have a major announcement to share regarding Xbox, though what it is remains a mystery. Jez Corden briefly teased the announcement on the Xbox 2 podcast, though refused to elaborate further on what it could be. While many believe it'll be a major game reveal, others believe it could be something bigger, possibly plants of another acquisition. Man, can you imagine another purchase out of Microsoft? Who? Who would they get? Ubisoft? Square Enix? Can you imagine they bought Square Enix, Brad? Maybe maybe they're going to buy Embracer. They've been laying in closing oh. studios like there's no tomorrow. That is a train wreck right now, that's for sure. Microsoft <laughs> recently closed its deal to acquire Activision Blizzard, meaning it could be an announcement about a new game coming to Xbox Game Pass or new releases that could act as Xbox major exclusives going forward. They also confirmed we'll finally get a release date uh, for the Xbox version of Baldur's Gate 3, which is planned to release this year, pointing to a mid to late December release. I wouldn't mind jumping in on Baldur's Gate, but I'm terrified that I'm going to hate the combat terrified it's it's uh so i have it and uh it's your typical D, &D like there's no mm -hmm, actual mm -hmm. dice but that's what it is is it's like dice rolling and and all about your skills right but it's a great game it's a it's a phenomenal game and it de it deserves all the awards that it's been nominated for that's fair big announcement though brad coming out of xbox any thoughts plans Insight? see i'm not really an xbox guy I know. um <laughs> but uh I think it's going to be, it's got to be an acquisition. Like, uh, it, I don't know. I honestly, that's, that's just where I'm leading towards. Like, I, they've been pretty chummy with the new president of Square Enix. So mm -hmm. you never know. Uh, maybe, maybe they come out on stage and say Grand Theft Auto 6 uh, exclusive to Xbox. We purchased Take Two. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not likely. When it comes to the Xbox side, like something big needs to come around. Obviously, Starfield was a win but still a bit of a loss right the years continue without mm -hmm. seeing an xbox title for the game of the year nominees i thought for sure this year we would have saw starfield in there and then we played it i was like that's not making it like that's just no. amongst the games out this year the caliber of games we've had there's no way we'll see starfield there which is heartbreaking because there's another at the end of the day it's another loss for xbox fans right here we go again. When is Xbox going to get a W? That's the biggest thing. Can they reveal yeah. something of the hype that is going to bring it to the Game Wars? Man, at this point, I really don't know what they've got up their sleeve. If anything at all, they could reveal a new game. Does it really matter? 
Like we've seen the falls this year of Xbox, and it's great that they have Activision Blizzard. That just means they've added more studios. Call of Duty, we just reviewed Call of Duty on the show. It's coming up this week if you haven't seen it. Man, it's just more Call of Duty, right? Like, mm-hmm. here we go again. It's another Call of Duty game. Congrats. Again, it, but it, it does massive numbers, right? So, yeah. Call of Duty fans love Call of Duty. It is what it is, but it's just another, man, I'm ready for a break for Call of Duty myself. But that's just me personally. It's not a big, huge Call of Duty fan. Dude, I jumped in the campaign. I was like, I don't need to do this anymore. I really just don't need to. But Xbox needs something. Dude, they got to come out swinging with something. And I'm trying to figure out what it could be. We know about so many other titles that they're working on already. Where is Everwild, though? Right? What is Coalition? Do we get another Gears? Do we get a Gears 6 announcement? Maybe that's the big reveal. Are, Are we ready for a Gears game yet? I don't think that's ready. Where's Perfect Dark? Brad, there's so many questions. So yeah, where's Fable? Many. Ah, well, do you think, okay, do you think the big announcement is a Fable release date? <laughs> Could you imagine? It's just like, that's all it is. It's just it's like, <laughs> like that fairy, and then the, as the fairy gets stuck into the frog, it's got this release date. And it's like, that's wow, the... good job, Xbox. Uh, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Let us know. Hit us up over on Twitter, at the official ITG. What could Xbox be up to? Brad, we continue on with more Xbox, buddy, as Todd Howard reveals how many Bethesda employees are still working on Starfield. Maybe this will pull you in. Christian Miller over at Game Rant. The Elder Scrolls VI entered the development stage at Bethesda. Todd Howard reveals that the majority of the studio is still working on Starfield. The latest Bethesda title broke several major milestones, garnering plenty of interest at launch on both PC and Xbox, but support for the game fizzled out in the following weeks as now even skyrim has more players than starfield on steam (laughs) dude uh like what do you say to that anybody no i don't think that'll be bad i can't believe you're still supporting redfall if anything shut that down get arcane back onto dishonored 3 hopefully they want to make another dishonored because that's where my heart lies but i'm shocked we're having more people on skyrim than we are with starfield now Dude, is it the setting? Is that the thing? Space? Is it clicking for people? Well, see, again, I've like I've only put ten hours, so I haven't really been able to do a lot of space exploration. But I think yeah. maybe people are overwhelmed with the amount of planets you can visit. Like, sure. I don't know. I, like when when you guys had originally talked about it, and then when you talked about it in your review that you can go to a lot of planets, <laughs> like. Yep. It, do you get do you get some kind of trophy or whatever for going to all of these planets? Like a lot of people might just not want to do that, and they just they know the world of Skyrim, they know what they're getting into. Sure. Um, I mean, yeah, you've got that crazy fan that I picked in Starfield when I when I went back. I was oh, like, oh yeah, I remember not, him. No chance. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, like maybe they just want to take an arrow to the knee. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So features <laughs> such as the ship builder in Starfield have seen near universal praise from the community and significant number of players weren't exactly thrilled with the implementation of procedural generation. The lack of proper space exploration in Starfield, coupled with planetary expl- exploration that started to feel monotonous to some, likely contributed to its popularity dropping since release. In a recent video by Wired, Todd Howard sat down to discuss the long career as a video game developer before also shedding some light on how many developers were still working on Starfield post-launch support. To everyone's surprise, Howard revealed that around 250 developers were still assigned to Starfield, which represents roughly 55% of Bethesda's 450-person crew. This means that Starfield is getting plenty more support for Beth- from Bethesda moves up before Beth- sorry before Bethesda moves on to the Elder Scrolls 6 properly as for what Starfield players can expect for the upcoming Shattered Space DLC details are still hazy but many are hoping that the features that the House Varin despite being one of the three major powers in the settled systems interesting Brad that there's still so many people working on it again though right we do know we're getting this DLC. Maybe that's what they're working on. Besides patching, I saw just the other day Starfield got patched pretty good, and they're working on little fixes here and fixes there and this, that, and the other. But it's really are they just working on the DLC more than anything else? Possible. Um, 
I, I didn't even know there was DLC. This is, this, <laughs> I'm just reading this. I'm like, wow, DLC already. It's like, <laughs> yeah, but no official release date though, right? We just know that that is post content that is coming to Starfield, which is one of the reasons why I want to wrap up the story is to find out what happens when I get into the DLC that I'm already set, ready to go. But as far as a release date goes, man, that could be like, I don't know, a year from now still, six months from now. Who knows? Because it is a matter of timing. When do you start to see the decline and get ready to launch the DLC to pull people back in? We've already started to see that decline, right? Because of the procedural generated expiration, people are just getting exhausted from it. My brother spent so much time just doing outposts. I was like, what are you doing? And then he built this ship. It was literally a cargo ship because still to this day, Brad, to this day, the encumbrance in this game completely sucks. I cannot walk from point A to point B without carrying more than five weapons and a little bit of cargo on me and maybe some minerals and I'm bogged down and I gotta crawl. I, I just, I think that's one of the biggest things that are pulling me out of the game now, trying to get back in the game. Yeah, I, I mean, with this DLC, who knows? Maybe they'll have uh, like a version of horse armor for your spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe that's for sure. Uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. It, when do you think we get anything on Elder Scrolls Six? Do you think that's maybe the big that's maybe that's their announcement, that's or, or <laughs> maybe maybe Xbox's big announcement's the DLC release date. Oh, man, <laughs> man, well, yeah, I don't know, right? Like when we look for a big announcement at the Game Awards, the Elder Scrolls Six is not far enough along. Yeah. to do anything that's going to warrant a big announcement here. But to be fair, Fable did the same thing when yeah. they did their announce. But I mean regardless if they if they do an announcement for Elder Scrolls 6, you're going to have PlayStation fans that are just going to be all over Twitter just wah, wah. bombing it because they're so upset. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Buy it's, the system. That's what that's just Elder Scrolls 6. Has it been confirmed as exclusive or are you just guessing it's going to be exclusive? Um I get I, I just from what I've been reading, like not Xbox never made any announcement, but they made Starfield exclusive. I have a feeling the next <laughs> Fallout's going to be exclusive. It's like you said numerous times, you don't spend almost ten billion dollars yeah. to do that, mind you. Sixty-eight billion for Activision. It's still on PlayStation, but Call of Duty is. I think it sells more on PlayStation, whereas you want people to yeah. be drawn to your system. Like we, have, like say, I say we. PlayStation has Spider-Man, like all these exclusive yeah. first-person titles, and Xbox has them, but they're not that great. So well, yeah, that they do need a home run, right? And Starfield was supposed to be the one to bank off of, and it just didn't quite click. Yeah. Elder Scrolls Six has that opportunity. Granted, though, right? Day one for Starfield had Game Pass numbers rise, like skyrocket to the top. Yeah more than they've ever had gaining more subscribers because why because they can download the game and just play don't have to run out to the store buy the game come back whatever or playstation fans are like man this is the only one i'm gonna get to play one of the biggest games this year is by getting an xbox so let's get in yeah. if you have a pc you just get game pass away you go yeah. opportunities are there right do they do that here with elder Scrolls 6 i think that's the smart thing to do when you talk about call of duty i think we're on two different planes really yeah. right Literally being one of the biggest juggernaut titles of the generation, of the console race, of anything. Microsoft doesn't want to let that money go. That's the other side. They're banking on all this money they're going to get from Call of Duty to put it on PlayStation. And also on the other side of it, dude, there's no way they're making this deal happen if they're going to make it exclusive because they weren't getting the deal approved. So they had to make sure that they were able to put it in as many places. That's why all of a sudden you saw, we're going to lock in for a 10 year subscription or a, a, um, like game pass service over here. And you can stream over here. You can stream over there. We heard so many other streaming platforms cut him, come out of that Activision Blizzard deal that nobody's even ever heard of. <laughs> Just like, what is this? But yeah, we'll see Elder Scrolls six, 250 people still working on Starfield. But don't forget the DLC is coming. Man, I got to get that game wrapped up. Brad Insomniac's Wolverine won't release until 2025, report claims. Mike Straw over Insider Gaming. Marvel's Wolverine game from Insomniac won't be released until 2025, at least 
That's what a new report claims. According to known leaker Daniel Richmond, not only will the upcoming game not be released in 2024, but it will also feature a darker and more violent tone than past games from the studio. Oh, I like that. It is Wolverine after all. As far as locations go, it's set in Madapur, a Southeast Asian city within the Marvel Universe. The city has also been known as a haven of, for pirates after being built upon the back of a dragon. That's an interesting spinoff there, Brad, yeah. for a Wolverine game, isn't it? Yeah. I, it's, it's, I like that dark setting because, I mean, yep. you can't have Wolverine in a teen-rated game where it's like, that's just what he is. He's violence. Yeah, absolutely, right? And so this was my biggest fear, I think, getting into Wolverine. A, when do we get it? I was really hoping for next year. Dude, I really thought next year would be when we would get it, but would it be more of the Spider-Man tone, or would it be that darker, grittier feel that we've known from, like, the Logan movies, right? Where mm -hmm. this is. Leo, he's got three blades on each hand. <laughs> they don't tickle, right? So yeah. let's, let's get into this. 2025, does that surprise you at all? Not really, because I think that was the original, like, when it was announced, like, just people in talking on, on mm -hmm. X were saying probably 2025, 2026. Yeah. So, uh, we, it's been a great year for gaming. I kind of think we need to take a break because there's a massive backlog, <laughs> <laughs> at least for me. So. No, that's fair. That's definitely fair. <laughs> My question then becomes, what does Sony have next year? What are we playing on our PS5s next year? Is it all third party? What first party title do they have coming down the pipeline we don't know of anything do we i don't i don't think there's anything unless unless we get a stealth drop of like last of us 3 which i'd highly well, doubt. okay so yeah we get the last of us part 2 remastered coming in january 19th that guy yeah. has a good new game mode but is that enough to carry us along the whole year not likely Fine. there's got to be something up their sleeves right you'd hope you'd hope yeah oh man i don't it's know hard, it's hard to say it is. It's very hard to say because we haven't seen their lineup whatsoever. We do know what Xbox is working on. They're working on a ton of things. But when it comes to PlayStation, dude, we still don't know what Bluepoint's up to, right? Insomniac is busy. Where's Sucker Punch with Ghost of Shushima 2? Is that something that comes out next year? Is that a possibility? Where's Haven? Where's what? Haven? Oh, uh, Fair Games? Dude, I don't know about all these live service games. I think that's another... Yeah, that's a whole other topic for another show. <laughs> May maybe we'll get abandoned next year. <laughs> oh man you're on fire today that's for sure i don't know let us know over on twitter once again what could sony be bringing to the platform for ps5 for 2024 brad it's a bit of a quiet day on the game release front what game are everybody playing today uh you can find wordless on pc switch xbox one and x ps4 and 5 there you go. Check out Wordless. Our review is up. Steve and I actually jumped into that one. It's definitely something you should play. And that'll wrap up today's show, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. This has been ITG Daily, the show that brings you the hottest in gaming news each and every day. We'll be back again tomorrow. I'm Drew. That's Brad. Brad, before we go, where can people find you? Uh, mainly on uh, Instagram. I, uh, we have two pages uh, at northern nerdcast and northern.gaming.events which is where you can keep up to date with both of the conventions that are taking place next year nice until tomorrow everybody thanks again we'll see you inside the game